Hello and good day. Welcome back to our class. This is Teacher Onendi Guzman and our topic for today is Cash Conversion Cycle for Business Finance. So whenever we talk about the cash conversion cycle, it refers to the average it takes for cash to go out through payment of raw materials and for cash to enter through the collection of receivables. So we will use this formula. Cash conversion cycle is the same as inventory conversion period plus receivable collection period minus payable deferral period. For our okay, benefit of our discussion, we will include the following. So first one is the payable deferral period. So it means that it is the length from the day of the raw materials are purchased or received up to the payment is made. Number two, inventory conversion period is the length of time it takes to convert raw materials into finished product. And finally, receivable collection period is the length of time from the selling of goods on accounts up to the full collection of credit. So let's consider this problem number one. The Guzman Company manufactures a special type of beds for the use of elegant hotels. It buys raw materials every seventh of the month for 300,000 pesos. The suppliers of the raw materials provide only 30-day credit terms to the company. It takes 60 days to convert the raw materials into finished products. Once the products are finished, the company sells them to hotels on account. The buyers are given 45 days to settle their accounts. So what is the cash conversion cycle of the Digisman company? So let's identify first the given. So we have inventory conversion period is equal to 60 days. Receivable conversion period is equal to 45 days. While the payable deferral period is equal to 30 days. So if we will apply our formula, cash conversion cycle is equal to inventory conversion period plus receivable collection period minus payable deferral period. So we have 16 plus 45 minus 30. So therefore, we can say that the cash conversion cycle is equal to 75 days. The cash conversion cycle presents the general picture on the length of time involved between cash outflows and cash inflows. Business with a lower cash conversion cycle has a better cash position than a business with a very long cash conversion cycle. So to improve the cash conversion cycle of a business, the financial manager must perform, among others, the following tasks. So we have reduced the inventory conversion periods by selling the goods faster. Second one is reduce the receivable collection by collecting the receivable faster. And number three is lengthen the payable deferral period by availing longer credit terms offered by raw material suppliers. We can also determine the cash conversion cycle using the financial statement information. So we have the following formula. So inventory conversion period is equal to inventory divided by cost of sales per day. Receivable conversion period is equal to receivables divided by sales all over 360 days. While payable deferral period is equal to payables divided by purchase, purchase or purchases per day. Or we can say that payable deferral period is equal to payables divided by cost of sales all over 360 days. So let's have example number two. So the following information is taken from the records of the Divisman company as of December 31, 2020. So we have the sales of 2,600,000, the cost of sales is 1,950,000, then inventory is 490,000, accounts receivable is 625,000, and account payable is 290,000. We would like to know what is the cash conversion cycle of the company. First, what we're going to do is, of course, we will determine the inventory conversion period, which is equal to inventory divided by the cost of sales per day. 
So again, from the figure, we have 490,000 divided by 1,950,000 divided by 360 days. So it means that we have inventory conversion period is equal to 91 days. The second thing that we will look into is the receivable conversion period. So again, we will use the formula receivables divided by sales all over 360. From our figure, we can say that okay, we have 625 as our accounts receivable while we have 2,600,000 as our sales. So therefore, we have 87 days. Now that we know the receivable conversion period is equal to 87 days, therefore, we can determine now the payable deferral period, which is equal to payables divided by the cost of sales all over 360. So from our figure, the payables is 290,000 pesos divided by the cost of sales is 1,950,000 pesos. So, again, applying our figures and the formula, we come up with 54 days rounded up to the nearest full number. So again, payable deferral period is equal to 54 days. Now that we know this date, we can determine now our um, cash conversion period. Again, so payable deferral period is equal to 91 days. Then receivable conversion period is equal to 87 days while the payable deferral period is equal to 54 days. Now, if we want to know our cash conversion uh, cycle, this is the same as inventory conversion period plus receivable collection period minus payable deferral period. So, substitute the, uh, the value. So, we have 91 plus 87 minus 54. So, we have now the cash conversion cycle is equal to 125 days. So, so the 125, uh, 124 day cash conversion cycle must be checked against the planned cash conversion cycle in case the computed figure is higher than the planned conversion cycle, the financial manager should find ways to improve the labor. Otherwise, the business will encounter a big problem in its cash position and cash flows in the future. So that ends our discussion on the cash conversion cycle. Again, this is Teacher on the month. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified about my new videos. Thank you.